man, I got to carry this shit on me more often or, or something dedicated to recording it, you know. Good evening. My name is Alex. And this is the Corporate Cowboys podcast. Today's date, proof of life, is Tuesday, December 21st, 2021. This episode, uh, kind of spur of the moment, every now and then, and now I know that it's been about a week since I last released an episode where we uh, read together Hitman, the technical manual for the independent contractor. And while that was lots of fun to be able to read through it and comment on it, you know, somewhat update it to the 21st century um there's there's been moments there's been moments uh and and i I do read a lot i'm i enjoy reading I'm, i'm i'm an avid reader you might say because it's just what i like to do i like to exercise the mind and let the information that i pick up that i extract from books just marinate, just soak in, in the gray matter in my brain. And ideas will will coalesce and, and come together. Um, and that's always fun to explore. Doing thought experiments or, or uh, putting together theories, bits and pieces of information from different aspects and, and facets of life and so, social history to be able to come up with the continuance of innovation i want to continue innovating i, I can't be i can't be caught lacking i i won't be set up to settle i won't be set up just to fail if i'm going to be set up if i'm going to set myself up like in the episode titled the first half of self-sabotage. If I'm going to set myself up, it's going to be to succeed, even on my way out. So this shit will get to the point where where it'll put you on edge, man. It'll put you on edge, this corporate life. If you haven't had, <laughs> I mean, n- nothing like that new wave PTSD, right? But if you haven't had How do I phrase this as nicely as possible, as diplomatic as possible? (sighs) If you haven't had a midlife crisis, an existential crisis, yeah, an existential crisis. If you haven't had an existential crisis that prompts you, requires you to make the decision whether or not Pull the trigger, and by pull the trigger, I mean to make a choice. To make a choice, man, and either go with the safe and stable or go with the uncertain and in the lead, essentially, getting ahead. Which, I mean, I'll be honest, there's no such thing as security in corporate. We all know this. It's entry level forever. <laughs> go, go back. Go back to the episode. Entry level forever. It's eternal. Entry level. Motherfuckers could get let go. Could get let go on. You could get fired or get fired on. Out here. It's it's not, nothing. It's unlike... It's unlike childhood, and it's unlike convalescence. Everything in between, from infancy, and and maybe not even childhood, because some motherfuckers, some folks have a fucked up childhood, okay? So, yeah, all right, if we want to include them, if we want to be considerate of them, pretty much what is life from between infancy and convalescence is is a fucking is a battle 
is a battle that you have to come to grips with early. And some folks don't until it's too late. Too late on in life, motherfuckers turn around, find themselves turned around and try to get some semblance of control on on where life finds them, on where life has ran into them. Like, it, it's the equivalent of, like, time running out on people. Like, if time runs out on someone, <laughs> but yet, like, you know, the person doesn't die, right? The person is just due for an existential crisis. It's the equivalent of of life necessarily running in on them. It, it, it doesn't run out for them. Life isn't running out, even when their time, their time in their stage of life, like a certain phase of life that they're in, when that runs out on them, time is no longer on their side, effectively, no longer on their side. And life runs in on them. Call it a fucking backdoor entrance, uh, uh, a side entrance, some some sort of of invasion, some sort of trespass. And again, we're not entitled to this security. I don't know where folks come up with this notion of security. I've had... <laughs> Um, I've, I've had to let go of individuals who are both younger than me and individuals who are older than me. And looking back in hindsight, I, (laughs) I gotta recognize, I have to come to terms with the fact that I was acting in the role of life because time had ran out on them. Now, please bear in mind, please consider that I didn't list ages, I didn't list sexes or or genders or whatever the fuck identities, but these individuals had it coming and time Runs out for everyone eventually. I got a I got a clock on me. I got a Glock and a clock on me. I got a timer. I got a timer that's counting down on me. And how I stay ahead, how I get ahead, is how I mentioned previously, is not sticking my neck out, not taking not taking, what is it? Not taking unnecessary. I'm trying to, I want to create this picture in your mind. When I say, I don't want to not stick my nose where it doesn't belong because shit, I dictate that, right? But I don't want to stick out. I don't want to stick out in some place where I'm not paying attention to my time. (laughs) Where I'm not paying attention to time and space. Yeah, I, I mean, it, it is low key esoteric, I suppose, but I, I don't want to. I don't want to. No, I don't want to slide into fucking esotericism. It's being mindful of my time and where I am in space. All of that within context, within socio historical context. It all matters. It all matters. Why? Because if you pay attention to the wrong things, if you pay attention to items that don't inform you, if you pay attention to processes, to bullshit, if you pay attention to shit that 
won't enlighten you in a way that that won't provide you with the information, with the knowledge, the know-how, with with the methodology that that won't provide you with with the idea of what to do, what of what to do with where you are given the time and space with what to do with where you are at at your exact time like (laughs) you're fucking up bro time is running out that means you're not paying attention to your time and your time is counting down and and i'm not gonna say it's set because again i'm grappling with the idea as well in the future later on I could be posing this same hypothetical, this same concept to someone else, an associate I'm trying to recruit or or uh, <laughs> just a loose end I have to tie up. What I want to solidify and and really particularize is the notion that It's not that we can extend our timers, but we could watch it. We could watch our time in a manner that will, that where we could mind our time. There you go. We can mind our business. We can mind our time. We can mind the space that we're in as well. And effectively, pause time effectively have time not matter because yeah time goes on like life life goes on right life life is running in on niggas right now as we speak people are are, people are being born every minute and people for sure are getting fired people for sure are leaving (laughs) the point is the point is that we could make time count for us, time work for us. We don't necessarily know how much time we have left, right? Because I might figuratively, in my mind, right? In my mind, I might have three days, three months, three years left of my time, three minutes left, right? And that'll all dictate the amount of time that I have towards achieving some objective, right? Towards uh, towards learning and, and mastering some form of, uh, I don't know, persuasion or, or, uh, or oration, you know, some skill that I'm trying to hone All of that counts towards increasing my ability to slow down. And it's not not even slowing down my timer. It's just slowing down my perception or uh, accelerating my ability. Accelerating my ability in relation to everyone else's who is... Everyone else's. Who, yeah, effectively. Exactly that. Exactly that. Not so much slowing down my time, but it slows my perception in proportion to accelerating my capabilities in relation to everyone else's wherever... They are fucking up, not minding their time, investing their energy in other bullshit, and their time is running out. Again, life gives a single fuck. Life does not give a single solitary fuck about where you are or how much time you think you have left, right? Because this is... Even me minding my time is an illusion. I might have 
unbeknownst to myself with just the way I operate, may have slighted someone somewhere, sometime, and have not been mindful of it. Maybe have not taken it into consideration and internalized it. So, where before I thought I had three minutes left. I don't know, my door gets kicked in and I'm left for dead. Question is, what side of the door you wanna be on? (laughs) Mind your business. You mind your business and business will take care of you. I've said that time and time again. It never fails. And it, and it does not cease to amaze me the degree to which it's true. You have to mind yourself. You want to hustle, you be the hustler. You want to pimp, you be the pimp. And it goes even deeper than that. You want to sell drugs, fuck all that. You be the drug. Drugs sell themselves. Who says that we can't create that that stimulatory sensation, that feeling? And folks have said it. The proverb goes, people may not remember what you look like or people may not remember your name, but they'll remember how you made them feel. And there is a long thread of truth in that. There's a long string. There's a long loop. I mean, if we're talking about interconnectivity, again, again, with the fucking esotericism, if we're talking about, I don't know, some kind of string theory where just me breathing with a certain intention, something something small, a, a seemingly insignificant act on my part causes ripples and, and waves throughout time and space because again of the inter of, of, of the idea of interconnectivity that's enough that's enough why because reading picking up the knowledge and honing it as a tool or a weapon empowers you in a way you may not know and a way you may not see. And I try to conduct myself as honest and honorable and with the utmost integrity as is possible given my state. Given my state, given my, given the human condition. How about that? (laughs) Given the human condition. But I'm not ignorant to the fact that what I know, well, I mean, first of all, that what I learn, what I hone, and then what I know and what I use and how I use it. It serves me. It serves me in a way to move forward with life. See, I'm not, I'm not, and and, and it's because I'm I'm human, right? Like I'm not actually life. I'm not a, I'm not a, a supernatural force. I mean, I'm a force. I might be a force to be reckoned with, right? But I'm not supernatural. Niggas die. Niggas bleed like, just like us, said Notorious Biggie. Notorious B.I.G. Everybody's born and everybody leaves. But what you do with your time while you are here, if you are misinvesting it, malinvesting it, ill-investing it. See, I'm just fucking making up words. But if you're, if you're wrongfully investing, if you're fucking up with investing your time and your energy, you're busy what? Popping at bitches, trying to sell drugs, 
copping the latest kicks. Oh, fucking PS5 came out. Uh. Hey, man. You do you. Obviously, I can't hate, right? But this is a warning. This is a warning. I've seen things. I've lived things. That tell me. That tell me. Investing my time correctly. Or investing my time productively. Ought to serve me in a way to be productive, to produce, to create. In other words, to create. Yeah, I mean, if I want to go back and say invest your time creatively, that's what you want to do. Otherwise, you're just you're just swimming. I'm not even swimming. You're fucking doggy paddling. You're just treading water. <laughs> you're. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You, okay. So, 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 so you're trading water. Let's let's follow that train of thought a little bit. You're you're trading water, right? And the time you have left, the time you have left, is the equivalent of when your muscles will give out. But hey, I mean, when niggas are about to, when dudes, when people are going to drown, adrenaline kicks in, and seemingly okay, they can tread water forever. Why the fuck would you misinvest that adrenaline treading water when you could swim forward? Like, actually fucking do something. Get somewhere. Be someone. Creatively, of course. I mean, you don't want to be destructive. You want to avoid being destructive. I mean, there are some some uh, <clears throat> individuals out there, principalities of sorts, that are in the business of constructing uh, evil schemes, evil mechanisms, evil machinations. Probably of like the worst possibly imagined. But, you know, nothing's new under the sun. This shit's probably happened time and time again. But, uh, <laughs> I mean, if I really were to trivialize it, it's a game. And like any game, you want the high score. You, you literally cannot lose. The, o <laughs> the only way you can lose, the only way you can lose is by fucking up Misinvesting your time and uh, being one of those aforementioned shysty principalities <laughs> who are in the business of fucking up. They're literally in the business of fucking up. And man, cleaning, cleaning, I don't know, like if you're, uh, I'm not like a clean freak, right? But when I get cleaning, bro, when <laughs> when I get to cleaning, it's fun. It is, it's fun. Like. When you when you you know working with dirt, putting in work, when you are doing dirt and cleaning, fuck, it's uh especially when you know they have it coming, especially when you have time on your side, especially when they feel, especially when they when they when it clicks for them like when. <laughs> When you can see the gears in their mind turn and realize, come upon the sudden realization that time is running out and they see, like, because some of these motherfuckers think they're doing right, right? Like, they, they've been brought up to, you know, to be, to have quote unquote, the best intentions or, or well intentions. And uh, the road to hell is paved with these well intentioned motherfuckers. Literally, the road to hell is paved with well intentioned motherfuckers. So you're stepping on bodies already, right? And they're just one more for you to lay down. I mean, depending on 
if you're going to or coming from hell, right? But they're just one more motherfucker laying down in the road. And a sudden realization that comes across their face that time is running out and you represent life running in on them. It's a sight to behold. It's a sight to behold. Shit's better than drugs. <laughs> if you haven't visited the page yet, uh, Instagram, Corporate Cowboys. Find us on Instagram. The Corporate Cowboys Podcast on Patreon. Sign up and subscribe for that. Obviously, the episodes are going to be dropping with more regularity. We've already uh, finished that audio book. And uh, I'm on the search for another good read. I mean, I, I don't mind. I should stop saying I mean, right? I don't mind reading out loud. I believe reading out loud is actually really great practice for constructing uh, arguments and formulating ideas, working out ideas in the mind. Why? Because reading in and of itself is... Uh, the process of dissecting and digesting ideas written by someone else. And when you become a capable reader, an apt reader, you learn what you can dismiss and uh, what you can keep and add to and magnify and essentially upgrade whatever mental tool, what, whatever, yeah, what, whatever mental tool you're honing or sharpening in your mind. You want to keep your mind sharp, right? And if your mind is a fucking weapon, be it a gun or a knife or a fucking club or whatever, you, whatever your weapon of choice, right? Then you want to keep that weapon in not a pristine condition, right? I mean, if you're using it, it I mean, it'd, it'd be nice to, to have it in a pristine condition and never have to use it, right? But then the world would be perfect. And I mean, do we really want that? Um, <laughs> it's a joke. Of course we want the world perfect, but we're just working for it. We're just working for perfection. Will we achieve it? I mean, we can't cover the sun with our thumb, so we just gotta work for it. We just gotta work for it every day. Because there's always gonna be some motherfucker who wants a little more and believes everyone else deserves a little less. Always. But that's the game of life. That's the game of life. It's, uh, it's surprisingly more checkers than chess when, uh, when you're in that mind state when your mindset tells you that this shit is easy, learning, honing, using, and, and re really employing knowledge, deploying knowledge like, a, like, like in a very utilitarian fashion, like a weapon, like a tool, just using it creatively. It really ties in the importance of organization. And by organization, I mean time, organization, time management, essentially, and uh, spatial awareness, I suppose. Just really, really basic stuff. It's like, it's so fucking basic. Like, now that I've been out of high school for <clears throat> fucking a decade, it's been a minute, bro, at least a decade. Now that I've been out of high school for hella fucking years, right, I look back and I recognize, I see what algebra was good for. 
why we need geometry, why algebra two even like calculus. I I see where it clicks. I see where I could use it. Obviously, I'm no mathematician, right? Actively, I'm not actively a mathematician. But every now and then, I'll dabble. That's just not my line of work. That's not my official line of work. That's not my dedicated line of work. It's not something I'm I'm uh, consummately committed to, as I am corporate. But it all it all comes rushing back when you're in high school. I mean, because when I was in high school, obviously I was fucking misinvesting my time, investing it wrongly, incorrectly, I should say, just really, just really fucking up my life, man, and, uh, I mean, you could go back and and listen to a couple of, uh, more of the history-oriented episodes of the podcast, I go into some of it, not a lot of it, some of them are my stories, some of them are other person's stories, they just just serve as examples of maybe what to do and maybe what not to do. And if you could, if you're somebody who can learn by mistakes and doesn't have to learn by trauma, <laughs> shit, more power to you. But uh, yeah, obviously there are some things in life that you have to see and behold for yourself. That you have to see for yourself and behold onto your person in order to completely grasp and understand the lesson to be derived from it. Fucking wild shit, man. Life's been a wild ride, but I'm happy I'm, I've been able to keep up so far. So far. I've been I've been saved a couple times. I don't know if you can count that as being saved. Um, but yeah, I mean, like, I'm technically... I, I don't say this lightly. Like, I'm, I'm technically not supposed to be here. But the fact that I am here tells me that somewhere along the way, I invested my time and my energy correctly. I invested it correctly. Where I managed to save myself. By the skin of my teeth. And now I'm... I mean, I, I can't... I don't dwell on it. It's not something that I'm either proud of or ashamed of or... or uh, What is it? Regret? Nah, man. You can't, you can't walk into life with regrets. I mean, we all have things that we've done things actions that have marked us actions that get us dirty but that doesn't mean that you still don't have the power to uh effectively effectively change your intentions for the better yeah and for the worse i get it i get it i was I was stuck in that mode for a minute. <clears throat> Once a crook on paper, I told myself, I can't believe I used to think like that. Like looking back now, looking back now, I thought, I thought this situation was critical, man. Like that Andre Nicotina song. I thought it was situation critical. And I would never escape. That I would always be dirty. I, I would always be... I mean, I, I I am always dirty, but that I would always be, um, <clears throat> that that my my dis that my life or that my path would have a predisposition for just fuckery. That where I would tell myself, once a crook on paper, I had no other options. Like I would have to check the box um, in certain states, right? Like. Where where they asked, have you been arrested for committing felonies or what was the, the disposition, the date of the offense and the, the results or whatever, right? Like, I told myself, like, these motherfuckers would never hire me, right? So I'm, I'm better off 
sticking them up and, and coming back next month. Like, just idiotic, idiotic bullshit. And I'm thankful. I'm thankful for God. I'm thankful for myself. For whatever force majeure, for whatever act of nature pitted me against myself and I fucking won, man. I fucking won. To this date, I never had to, uh, I've never had to lash an innocent person, you know, outrightly, like shit that I've investigated. I've, thankfully, I've been put, um, I mean, I've had to let people go on some petty shit, right? So I have had to assert myself then and there, but as far as like moving with iniquity and, 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 and feeling a power trip over it, like I, I mentioned this in a previous podcast, uh, uh, the previous episode of the podcast uh, about power tripping and it exists in so far as having the power to change a person's direction in life by asserting your own, asserting the power and, and, and authority at your disposal to effectively change or end somebody's uh, career, let's say. But that power trip comes at a price if it's employed for the wrong reasons. And I've seen it. I'm thankful for... I'm thank- I should just say I'm thankful. I'm thankful I have not had to experience it. And I, I don't believe I've had the temptation for it. I don't believe I've considered the temptation for it as far as actually, you know, flexing on the innocent. That might be part of the reason why I like talking. I'm a somewhat, somewhat very social person. Not only do I enjoy reading, but I enjoy using what I learn in order to make connections, recruit, fortify a network, expand it, and and build from there. I feel like, and I'm not saying like you should go out of your way to shake hands with, with the devil. No, not at all. Not at all. It's just that sometimes how do I say this in a way? I, I used to uh, I used to have a way of uh, expressing myself when I was younger, when I was in high school, when I was uh, I don't know, when I was just kicking it with the with the with the homies, with the crew, with associates, acquaintances, um, where I was some kind of a rabble rouser, right? So I mean, not so much a rebel without a cause. Like I could just see through high school, like. Or I, or so I thought, right? But now look at me. I'm over here like, oh, I, I wish I'd have fucking became a mathematician, or fucking scientist. But you know, there's plenty of mathematicians and scientists who are getting fucked in the ass because uh, they can't assert themselves. All they know is egghead shit, and all they know is is nerding out and and and, and being an uptight square. That's all they know. So they fit. They fit very well into molds that others construct for them whether they know it or not it's they've just been conditioned they've just been conditioned they've they've been raised and and socialized to conduct themselves in that manner man this this episode is fucking carrying on for a bit i'm gonna wrap this up what you want or what i did right 
because you may or may not want this for yourself. You may or may not wish this for your kids. Just know that I'm I'm fucking putting in work out here. I'm doing it for the future, for my progeny, for future generations after me. And I'm definitely not the last. I might be uh I might be part of a new breed, the corporate cowboys. But corporate cowboys in and of itself isn't a new concept. The term, the term, you know, I I coined. But corporate cowboys in and of itself, nah. Nah, man. It's something that will only grow. Could only grow as a movement. As a way of life. As a perspective perspective lens with which to view the world through. You'll see. I mean, if you ain't vibing to this shit yet, if <clears throat> I gotta fucking tighten up. Alex, tighten up. If you are not vibing to this shit yet, if you don't feel this shit yet, oh, you will. You will. And if you found this episode tonight, if you found this episode today, wherever you are, in time, in space, I think you know what I'm talking about. (laughs) I think you know what this is. Anyways, business is war corporate war. Take care of yourself.